Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can we just take a moment just to worship him? I know we already done that. But with this last Sunday of 2021, can we just take an opportunity just to give them all, just to lift up our hands just for a moment. I know it was a little dim in 21. I know some didn't make it. But it's the grace of God we're all sitting here today. It's not by our power or by our might, but because of him. It's because of him. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. I don't know. He's such a good God. He's such a good God. He's worthy of your praise. I'm not trying to pump you up, but let's just take a moment to glorify him. Hallelujah. He's been too good to me this year. Down through the years, he's been too good to me. I might have lost a loved one. I might have lost a job. I might have lost this and that. But as long as I don't lose him, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. He's such a good God. He's everything you need. I know we need each other, but he's everything we need also. My God, he's a, he's a comforter. You know, I like how uh, Pastor taught, he's a lover of my soul. My soul longs for him. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If I could just turn your attention to just be for a few moments. Uh, Hebrews 12, 28. And it reads, wherefore we receive in the kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably and reverence and godly fear and godly fear thank you Lord Um, just for a few moments, I would just want to talk from a subject I feel the Lord laid on my heart. Um, faith and fear. Faith and fear. Amen. If I would do a poll or do some type of uh, examination or ask one, some would say that the two cannot coexist. You know, either you're going to have one or the other. The word fear sometimes is from a negative perspective. It, it, it's looked for, you know, it's from the word, in the Greek word phobos, or I'm not probably not saying that right, but that's where we get the word phobia from. You know, when you have a phobia to things, you're, you're on the alert. You are looking, you are aware. And so 
having a fear is not always a bad thing. Uh, it also means to be respectful or to be in reverence. And, and, and we see that in Philippians 2 and 12 and 13, Paul warned the people or he encouraged the people. He says, wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You know, there is a benefit to having a fear. You know, a lot of times, you know, I've, I've looked at in the Bible and a lot of times we, we magnify the love of God. And sure, that's a good thing. We all are sitting here today, not because of our own power, our own might, but it's because the love of God. And, and, and if you haven't experienced the love of God, you can receive that today. You can be baptized in his name. You can be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. But, but, but not only is love uh, a great theme in the word of God, we see the word love in the Bible 300 and 10 times. It's found in 280 verses. But on the same hand, there's a word of uh, fear. Fear that's found over 400 times in the Bible. It's found 385 Bible verses because there is a benefit to reverencing the most holy God. See, 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 you know, a lot of things in this world I understand that we're fearful of. You know, there's the coronavirus, you know, that's going on today, and I don't make it lightly. But, 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 you know, sometimes we're so fearful of those things, but we're not fearing the holy God. We, we've got to understand that we got to put the reverence back into our lives. Amen. We got to put the respect of God back into our homes. My God, my God. I understand that, 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 you know, that we don't, sometimes we see fear as a bad thing. But just for a few moments, I want to talk to you this evening, this morning, the benefits of fearing God. There are rewards. There is a reward for living for him. There is, a, there is a benefit for giving my life to a God, to a holy God. Proverbs 14, 26 says, Fear the Lord is the fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. When I allow the fear of God to rule my life, is life. There's life in fearing God. There's life in respecting him. There's life in reverencing him. Not with just my words, but with my actions. Not with just what I say, but how my lifestyle is aligned with him. You know, the Bible talks about that, you know, that we honor him with our mouth, but our hearts are far from us. Sometimes I got to do a heart check. I got to say, Lord, where is my heart? Is my heart for you or my heart is for the things of the world? But when I fear God, there is life. And the Bible said he come to give us life and that more abundantly. How is it a good thing to have abundant life? It's a good thing. It's a great thing. My God, in Proverbs 19.23, it says, The fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that have it shall abide satisfy, and satisfy. He shall not be visited with evil. You don't have to worry about what's going to come down your pipe because the fact is that there are some things that's going to knock on your door. But if you got the fear of God in your life, guess what? Everything is going to be all right. My God, my God, because it is life. It's life. And, and, and Luke 1 and 50 says, and his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. Those that fear God have the mercy of God on their life. 
Those that stand in, in awe of him, in respect of him, in love of him, because he's a great God. My God, I can say that I have mercy upon my life. Because I know, you know, sometimes, you know, we all need some mercy. We all need mercy. Like first lady said, every day. Every day. And so it is to generations, it's not just for my generation, but it's for the next generation. Those that fear the Lord. Psalms 25, 14 says, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he would show them his comfort. He would show them their promise. He would show you what God wants for your life if you have a fear and a reverence for him. My God, we got to understand that, you know, we want to understand, everybody want to know a secret and, and things and want to know the hidden truth. But my God, it's with those that fear him. <laughs> the Bible says that, <laughs> that there's, there's wisdom. That's the beginning of knowledge. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. And, and so we got to understand that <clears throat> Job, Job 28, 28. It says, unto the man, he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and depart from evil is understanding. When I fear God, there's a wisdom that's past, that's like no wonder. God will endow with you wisdom and power like no other. Because the fact is that my hope is not in myself, but my hope is in him. My hope is in what he can do for me and how he wants to lead and guide me. My hope is in him. Psalms 115, 13 says, he will bless those if you want to bless them. If you want a blessing, he will bless those who fear the Lord, the small with the great. I can understand that I can walk in the blessings of God because I have the fear of God upon my life. You know, that's what I see the world today and what's going on. You know, it's, we have lost the fear of God. You know, I can remember when I was uh, <laughs> when I was coming up, and and you know, I didn't have uh, I didn't I wasn't brought up in the church, so you know, but I had a fear and reverence of God. You know, I had a godmother kind of put that in me as a young, and I remember, you know, we would walk and get to the church grounds. You know, we would stop talking because you know we saying all the bad words and. <laughs> all the uh, things we don't supposed to be talking about. But when we got near the church, we got near those grounds, there was a reverence. There was a respect where we wouldn't say a word until we got to the other side. <laughs> and, and, and so because there was a fear and a reverence that we had for the God. Because the Bible lets us know that we should be holy as he is holy. And so... He will bless those who fear the Lord, the small and the great. Psalms 145 and 19 says, He will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He will also hear their cry and save them. My God, I know we need to be saved. We want God to hear our cry. We want God to come see about my situation. You know, but the thing is that we got to understand if we are not fearing God, Respecting him. And let me just real quick. The word fear is basically I'm alarm. I'm alarm. I am in reverence. I am respect. It's not from a word where I am scared of him. No, God wants us to come near him. He wants us to come and be with him.
Amen. Amen. So, Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says, you want to know the, the conclusion of the matter. Why am I here? What is the reason why I'm here? It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. We're trying to understand why am I here, God? What am I here to do? But God is telling you the whole duty is to fear him and to keep his commandments. You know, a lot of times we look at commandments as a bad thing. But, I, but boundaries, amen, it comes to help save us, keep us safe from our, from our ways, amen. Because we got to understand that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts, amen. And so... I am honored to live for God. I am honored to give my life to him. I am honored, amen, for him calling my name. My God, and, and, and we got to come to an understanding that God wants us to realize that we cannot do it by ourselves. Because the Bible says that, for it is God who worketh in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. It's his will. It's his will. So I got to align with the Holy God, align with his will. You know, I got to make up in my mind in 2022, it's not about me, but, you know, we always, we know in the Lord's prayer, thy will, my, you know, my kingdom come, thy will be done. Thy will be done. Is that your desire this morning? For his will to be done in your life. Or do I want to continue to go down my own path? You know, the Bible talks about there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end of his destruction. I don't know about you, but I want to continue to walk in life. I thank God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the baptism in Jesus' name because I understand that gives me life and that more abundant. I understand that that gives me a way. Amen. I thank God for that way. I thank God for the fear of the Lord. And so I just want to encourage us this morning to walk in the fear of God. You know, if, if nobody around you is walking in this fear, make sure that you are the one walking in the fear of God. Because it's something I need in my life, that reverence. And not saying that we're not walking in that, but guess what? We all can walk a little closer to him. I know I can. In 2022, I've made up my mind to walk a little closer to him. I'm going to fear God and keep his commandments. I'm going to walk in his way and not my own way. My God, my God. Amen. So if, if we can just make up in our mind to honor him, to honor him, to respect him, not just in words, but in deeds. And in deeds. That's my... That's what I feel to do, to continue to honor him. No matter who else and whatever's going on around you, let's honor him with our lives. Let's honor him with our thoughts. Let's honor him with our actions. Amen, because he's a holy God. He's a God that's, that's just there waiting with open arms, with open arms. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm, I'm up there. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, sir. Praise God. Amen. Uh, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is clean. Man, I, I actually, uh, I was jotting down some notes as Brother Terry was speaking. And uh, many times while there are subjects and topics we are very familiar with, um, we need to be careful that we don't just dismiss God speaking to us. Holy Ghost prompting us 
because of the familiarity with uh, certain topics. But <laughs> uh, I, I would like the uh, I would like the notes, those uh, scriptures, because uh, one of them actually I was like I had never seen that one before. I know I've seen it because I've read the Bible, you know, my, uh, numbers, you know, uh, all the way through. But I just didn't, you know. Sometimes you just things you just miss, and that was, I mean, like wow. Um, one of the things I do pray uh, quite frequently is uh, praying for the fear of the Lord to fall on the earth, fall on the church. That's a, that's a regular prayer of mine because that is something that we do need. We need the fear of God. Um, and you and I, we could pretty much write it off and say, well, I already had the fear of the Lord. It's like those boys who were talking to Jesus who patted themselves on the back while they were trying to stab Jesus in the back. They said, well, we're the sons of Abraham. Jesus said, don't say, don't say you're the sons of Abraham. He's able to raise up stones to make them the sons of Abraham. Just because of, our, because of who we are doesn't automatically give us uh, a free uh, right to everything. Yes, and while I believe that, there, that we have uh, fear of the Lord, but with anything, it can become watered down. Uh, we, sometimes we just need a renewal and refreshing uh, to be reminded, be mindful. Uh, and so I don't take that as uh, something that's for someone else. What he said was for me. <laughs> Remind me, Lord, of what I need because that's the beginning of wisdom. I, had, I, that, I think it was in Luke uh, uh, I think it's one verse 50, chapter 1, verse 50. It's like, it was right there. It's mercy. I mean, I, that's, that's one that obviously slipped by me. <laughs> so, very, thank you, Brother Terry. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Amen. It's good to see everyone in here. our first time guest, please see us after service. I want to present something to you. Amen. I'm going to have Brother Valley Man. Yeah. Brother Valley, my, my friend, when I first came into the church, uh, he was probably uh, one of my, uh, I guess, first friends in the church. Br Brother Valley was one of the first, I had three or four Bible study teachers. They, I just was, <laughs> I was wearing them guys out. They was in, and uh, so he was one of my first uh, Bible study teachers. And, um, and um, he's always been a friend, uh, someone I can go to. One thing I've always known, when I needed prayer, I was like, okay. I'm calling the brother out. Well, sometimes I would call brother and sister Valley up and say, we're on our way over. <laughs> and it didn't matter what time of day or night. Uh, we needed to just get together and pray. And the only thing about it, if I knew I, if I was coming over there at uh, 11 o'clock at night, I wasn't, I wasn't getting out of there until 2 o'clock in the morning until I got <laughs> what I needed and more. And so uh, you want somebody to pray for you. Uh, so anyway, I, I'm really uh, uh, very uh, fond of the relationship that we've had over the years, but he's not up here because he's my friend. It's quite frankly, some, it, we can go a month or, or two or three without me talking to him outside of church, so it's, it's not like that. We're not into that around here. Amen. Amen. Uh, I do believe in loyalty. I do believe in loyalty. 
And you say, well, you bless those or whatever that are loyal? Certainly. You don't bless people who, for being <laughs> disloyal. <laughs> you don't bless disloyalty. So, uh, glad to have him. Brother Valley, do as you feel in the Holy Ghost. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I believe when, when, when we pray, something is going to happen. Go to bed. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, you know, I, I pray for people and sometimes, you know, I take a long time praying for them because sometimes I feel like I don't want to walk away with nothing happening. You know, I just don't want to leave them and nothing happen. I want to pray till something happen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God for the blood. Are you glad for the blood this morning? Hallelujah. Thank God when God see me, he don't see me. He see the blood that flows from Calvary. Let me take my mask. I'm so used to wearing masks. I, I got to wear a mask to sleep also. <laughs> they call it a breathing machine. Put that thing on, hook it up. And my wife glad for it. <laughs> Put um, Isaiah 61 and 1 on the, on the um, screen for me, please. He said, the spirit of the Lord is God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken heart. You know, sometimes we come in the, in the church with broken hearts, but we don't want nobody to know we have a broken heart. I know sometimes you could look at um, Sister Tracy, she came up here. I'm sure she have a broken heart because of a loss of her brother. But you know, there's others with broken heart, but we will not give that broken heart to God. Can I be honest and transparent and whatever with you this morning? You know, we put God on the level that we are, we are on. If we are broken hearted and we don't feel like we have done right that week, we feel like God is not going to heal our broken heart. Because why? Look, up, look at I'm, I'm here. I'm struggling. So God will not do for me what I'm asking for me. But you think, if you think you, you are serving a God that is faithful, a God will, that will come true for us, I'm not standing here because of what I've done. I'm standing here because of the grace and mercy of God that have kept me. I could have been dead and gone, but Jesus kept me. It's only because of God I'm here today. It's, why would God put me? There is churches in Trinidad. Why didn't he leave me there? I live in the Virgin Islands for nine years. And why couldn't he leave me there also? There were churches over there. But he brought me all the way to Maryland to be among you. I did not choose to be here this morning. I could have been other places, but God have made his choice. Are you going to disagree with the choices that God have made for your life? The home you live in, you did not build that home. God gave that home to you. Because why? Because he loves you. The job you work on is not because of your education background, but because of God and his love for you. God does not sit back and say, oh, my child is suffering. I'm thank God my child is suffering. No, he don't. He loves us so much that he gave his life. Can you find somebody that will give their life for you? 
but God did. You know why you want to know why we dance and shout and speak in tongues? Because God. Hallelujah. You know, the only time I used to dance and shout is only when we had carnival in Trinidad, where we dance in the street and shout. But thank God for the renewing of the Holy Ghost. I was glad when, the, when I was filled with the Holy Ghost, my friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've been in the church for 40 years. And when I look back, I know the Bible say everybody that was 40 and under died in the wilderness, but I refuse to die. I'm not going to die in the wilderness, my friend. I'm going on to the promised land. There was a promise for Antioch. Are you going to be a part of that promise? Are you going to be a part of the promise of God that you have made to this church? I'm not waving a white flag of surrender, my friend. I'm not surrendering to the enemy. I may fall. I may fall plenty of time, but I'm going to get up again. I'm going to keep getting up. I'm going to be like Jack in the Box. Every time they push me down, I'm going to get up again. I'm going to rise again, my friend. Just as Jesus rose from the dead. Hallelujah. Ain't no grave going to hold this body. Hallelujah. 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 If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you need to get the Holy Ghost, my friend, because there ain't nothing like it. You can continue speaking in English, and the devil can understand every word you say. But when I speak in tongues, he don't know what I'm saying. But God understands. Hallelujah. You got a broken heart in this morning? God could he bind up that broken heart. God want to proclaim liberty to some of us this morning. Are you captive by the enemy? You know, there is something about being captive by the enemy. You can't get what you want. The enemy give you what he wants to give you. And some of us keep living our life just like that. Just taking what the enemy got to give to us. Because we don't, we don't feel worthy. But you got to realize it's not about you and I. It's about him. Hallelujah. I'm a child of the king. Royal blood. The queen of England don't have nothing over me. I got royal blood flowing through my veins. And except you've been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, you don't have royal blood flowing through your veins. You are a child of the church. Not of God. Because you need the Holy Ghost and baptism in Jesus' name to become a child of God. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to offend nobody this morning. Okay. At least that's what the Bible said. Hallelujah. To proclaim liberty to the captive and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. He want to open up the prison. If you are bound this morning, you don't have to be bound. You don't have to leave here bound. I know, it's a, I know it's a holiday. I know we're celebrating Christmas and we want to get out of here. But if you are bound, Jesus could set you free. 
Did you know when Paul and Silas got set free, you know those shackles for love? They didn't walk along the street, they still have their shackles on. And Christian could walk on with shackles on. You could praise the Lord. But guess what? When you have shackles on, you could only move but so far. Because the shackles are still on. Why don't we let Jesus take those shackles off? So we can have the liberty that we need. The world is not looking for Christians that are bound. I'm going to say something to somebody this morning. There is a person in here. I know who you are. You love God. You love the word of God. You, you love to rejoice. You praise God. You do all of that. But when coming to be set free, you does not let nobody get close to you. When, when the Spirit of God try to reach you, you shy back in the corner. And you are bound. You are bound by the Spirit of, that's keeping you bound. And if you don't let Jesus set you free, you're going to become just like the people that you try to deliver and set free. You'll become bang on just like them because why? You are trying to hold all that stuff in because why? You are the one that's set in, in, in order where you do the delivering, but you do not let nobody deliver to you. I'm not standing here in judgment of you. But I'm standing here giving you a message. God wants to set you free. But the only way you're going to be set free is not by your prayer and not by what you are doing, but by someone else that God called to set you free. You are faithful to God. You love the word of God. You, you rejoice with the word of God. So you, it's not a, a person that does not love the word of God. That does not, it's someone that loves God and loves the word of God and loves the spirit of God. You worship every time the music plays, but God is dealing with your heart and you keep taking it back home with you. And if you don't let it go, it's going to destroy you. In Jesus' name. The opening of the prison to them that are bound. Um, both to, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort, the, the, comfort all that mourn. He won. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes. You know what they did in, in, in the Old Testament? When someone died, they get down on, on, the, on the ground and they throw the ashes all over their body. They put ashes because why? They want everybody to know they're in sorrow. And sometimes you want to let everybody know, I'm in sorrow today. But can you give that sorrow to God? Can you give your pain to God? I can't take it for granted because it's a Christmas holiday. You are not suffering. Oh, you are not going through nothing. You know something? The devil does not choose when you go through something. It, it, it don't matter to him what type of holiday it is. Sometimes in the holiday season, people hurt the most. Because why? They won't give it to God because why? It's a holiday. And holiday we should be supposed to be rejoicing. But you know the Bible says, rejoice not against me, honor. But when I fall, I shall arise. I shall arise.
arise shall arise. I'm not going to stay on the ground, my friend. You ever seen a little baby that stayed on the ground when they fall? No, they get up. You know, I like to see a LeBron kids. I take pictures of them sometimes. They run the hall. I, um, I don't know the one name, but um, I'm not sure, but she, she runs and she keeps running and she runs in front. She runs around the church. You know, you can't stop her. You know what I mean? You can't stop her. I'm going to run. Because why? That little child is free. And some of us growing up need to get free like that little child is. And you know, he said, whosoever will, that means any of us could be set free. He said, well, what anybody, some places you go, it's because of, of what your name and what's your title. But in the apostolic church, it don't matter your name, it don't matter your title. Thank God we could come in here and dance and shout and speak in tongues and enjoy each other. Because why, Jesus? Jesus shed his blood. Jesus shed his blood. Hallelujah. I meant the day that um, I think her name is Karen. Right? Karen, right? I, I remember when she got baptized. But you know how long we prayed for Karen? You know, for years we've been praying for Karen. Lord, save Karen. We just separate. We've been praying for Karen for years. But when I saw God on in Jesus' name, oh, there was something that rise up. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't give up on your prayer. Don't give up on your family. You know something in the new year? Some of you have been knocking on revival door. Harvest is going to come to you. Don't give up. No, it's no time to give up. Time to fight the good fight of faith. You know what I realized this week? My wife was speaking about all of her, her, um, her last brother died a couple of weeks ago. And she was talking about it. And then, I re then it, uncle, the last uncle on the family, on our father's side died. And um, we were speaking about it, and I started thinking, you know, on my father's side of the family, I don't have no other family left. The old, the old, all the brothers and sisters died out. And I'm the next generation. And guess what? I owe a, a, I owe a, a, I owe a debt to you, to this church, to the people of God. Because why? The example that I leave behind, it will go on to another generation. Oh, Hallelujah. Bless you. Jesus. Amen. He did one of those, drop the mic, that's it, I'm done. <laughs> Take it or leave it, receive it, do what you want with it. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Well, we could uh, leave here on a high note and go home, forgive the carnal reference. We could go home like uh, the characters in Ebenezer Screws still carrying the chains. I think one of those, whatever, if I remember correctly, I might, I might mess it all up. Y'all, some of y'all trying to figure out what I'm talking about. <laughs> one of those guys is walking around with chains on. <laughs> all right. So uh, that was a good uh, uh, analogy. It's, you can get out of prison. See, now we, uh, we have some uh, people that's familiar with the prison si system. We have some public safety workers, uh, things of that nature. Uh, they put you in prison now. Uh, when they do so, you don't have any cuffs and leg irons for the most part, correct? I guess if they put you somewhere, but for the most part, right? 
no leg arms. They put the leg arms and the cuffs and everything when they're leading you to, but once they put you behind bars. But then, according to my understanding of Scripture, they had places that they would put you, and you still had on chains. So they had inner prisons, dungeons where you would go to. And then you would be tied up. And so you can have chains and get released from the prison cell, but still have chains on. Can I say it this way? I believe that that is how it is spiritually. I personally don't believe the minute you come to God, uh, when you are imprisoned and and bound, uh, that all the chains fall off. I believe he sets the captive free, but there are some chains that we have that we have to choose to be set free from, from our past. From our hurt, our pain, that we have to decide. For instance, God fills me with the Holy Ghost. I get baptized in his name, and I have the spirit of life and freedom. He set me free from certain things or gave me the ability to be set free. But I choose to be bound by anger and hatred and unforgiveness. Well, that's a chain. That's bondage. And when we carry unforgiveness, we think we are, uh, that if we forgive a person that that has done us wrong, uh, we're being disloyal to ourselves. I can't forgive that person. Why? <laughs> because of what they've done to me. You mean you you you're saying you're disloyal to yourself. What you're actually saying is you're holding yourself as prisoner. God has set you free from out of the prison, but you're still walking around in the chains of unforgiveness. And the problem is, He said, if you can't forgive others, I can't forgive you. Christmas season is a great deception in a certain sense. Let me say let me let me define that. Because I don't have to because I don't have to be deceived. And so for for me, Christmas time is to be honest, a time of uh spending with my family, enjoying life, enjoying them. Not that I don't any other time. But, you know, it's just a special time, a different time to enjoy, you know, that and uh, whatever. And so just like on birthdays and anniversaries, it's a time to celebrate that. And so, uh, but I don't have to be bound by everything that the holidays bring. And then the deception in the holidays is that I'm going to... Uh, when I participate, it's the, it's the uh, what do they say, the, the most wonderful time of year and joy and all that. And if I get caught up in what they claim brings me joy, by the time January the 2nd or 3rd or 4th comes around, you wonder what happened to your joy. <laughs> well, this joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. Didn't come from a Christmas gift change program. So I learned something years ago. Well, you know Christmas, getting your gift, the gifts that you want doesn't bring you joy. You watch kids go through the presents. I mean, they go through those presents real quickly like, oh, okay, that's nice. Where's the next one? All right, that's okay. Where's the next one? Well, which one I'm going to give you joy? 
And that's how we are. I got this present, got this present. So, it's hard for them to tell you. I get stuff. I don't really want to open it. I'd rather open it the, the next day. They, in fact, go, get, come on and co-op. I'm not being screwed. It's like, I'm telling you right now, this is not going to bring me joy. I'll open it when I get around to it. I, I ain't kidding. I'll open it with, I ain't, she, no, she said, I'm just screwed. I just refuse, being around them and just enjoying and seeing them happy, that, that's, that's, that's all I need. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm not trying to be Scrooge. I'm just saying I'm not going to be deceived and get caught up. I don't mind it. Don't get me wrong. I don't mind it. It's okay. I'm not against Christmas. I like Christmas. Hey, I like this time. Amen. I, you know? So, but there are some people who are going to walk out of here, and you're going to miss the opportunity that was talked about. An opportunity to get some real peace, some true joy. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost like I'm preaching. The... Praise God. And you know what? You know how we tear them, bo them boxes open, those gifts open? Somebody right now need to do that and that. I'm going to tear this. I'm not hiding it anymore. And somebody know I'm talking to them because they feel it right now. Somebody know God is talking to them because they feel it right now. I want that. But y'all don't, we don't supposed to do it. It's holiday season. Oh, wouldn't it be great if somebody get delivered? <laughs> this holiday season, somebody's been bound all their life, be set free this holiday season. Praise God. Somebody who's been cloaked and they, they put on a smile when they come around someone, but they know, you know what, I really, this holiday, I really, I'm going to act like everything is fine, but deep down inside, I know. Some, some people hate this time of year because it seems like everyone else is happy. And deep down inside, I really know I'm empty. But I can't let anybody know. Because they're going to think of something wrong with me. Can I tell you something? Everybody isn't as happy as they claim they are. I can go ahead right now and, and, and because I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going to violate anybody or whatever, you know. You don't open up people's mail or whatever uh, during non-holiday season. You definitely don't open it up around Christmas. <laughs> It's like a double federal law when, uh, when you open up somebody's stuff on Christmas. You don't fool around with those cards that come in the mail on Christmas. But there are some people that in here this morning that are hurting. Some people that are empty. Some people that are lonely. Some people that know in a couple of, couple of weeks this joy I have, this temporary joy is going to be gone. Some people right now say, I don't know how long I'm going to go be able to keep, keep it up like this. I don't know what the, the coronavirus is going to hold. And, you know, I, I've been fearful, but it hadn't been the fear of the Lord. I've been fearful of everything else that's going on. Why don't we just bow our heads right now? Because I believe the Holy Ghost has been talking. God, I don't want to be bound by fear of life, fear of what's going on. I want the fear of the Lord in my life. I want the joy of the Holy Ghost. I want to be set free, God, this season. God, I don't want to go another year, another season, actually another day. God, I can use your peace as a pass of all understanding. I don't want, God, those things to be cloaked, God, with deception. God, I'm going to respond to you. If I look for this year, this time of year, this season, 
to give me something inside, something internally, by what I get externally. God, I understand that I'm deceiving myself. God, I need something that's lasting, something that's impactful, something, oh God, that will uh, uh, last stand the, time, the sands of time. God, right now, and I'm reaching out to you. I'm opening up myself to you. God, I'm not going to shut the door to what your spirit is doing right now. God, yes, despite the holiday season, I'm going to respond to you. It doesn't matter what someone else gets or receives. God, I'm going to get the gift that you're giving right now. I'm going to let go of anger. I'm going to let go of bitterness. I'm going to let go of malice. I'm going to let go of wrath. I'm going to let go of unforgiveness. I'm going to let go, Lord, of those things that are holding me back. I'm going to exchange, oh God, these ashes for beauty. Come on, somebody reach out after him right now. Come on, come on in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't need the holiday season or, or the holiday spirit, the, the spirit of Christmas. I need the spirit of God. Come on, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, won't we stand all over the sanctuary? Mando robo sheleba taba yaki talaba hasa tabahaya. I'm going to open this altar up. You don't have to worry about what someone thinks. I want you to just come on down here. If you feel like God is talking to you in any way, shape, or form, amen. If you just want to open up and say, God, I, maybe you're not talking to me, but I, Lord, I'm going to make myself available to you right now. Come on, we're going to open this altar up right now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's still early. It's still early. Jesus name I'm going to remind you if you're a guest at their services over after we finish praying please uh, go in our guest reception area we're going to greet you welcome you and give you a gift but God has something for everyone right now in the name of Jesus Christ come on won't you respond to the Holy Ghost won't you respond to the Spirit of God where the Spirit of the Lord is there is liberty where the Spirit of the Lord is come on Hallelujah. Come on, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yes, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, Come on, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, I said reach out after him right now. Where the Spirit of the Lord is. Thank you, Father. There is freedom. Thank you, Jesus. Where the spirit of the Lord is. Praise God. There is freedom. Freedom reigns in this place. That's it.
。